Hello and welcome to episode 3 of Talking uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, we will really just be talking about Age of Overlord uh, today and giving a quick overview of some major cards in the set that you can use for different uh, decks. This is really where Joe kind of Joey kind of jumps in. Uh, we'll, we'll touch on some prices, but we'll be doing a Marker Watch video uh, next week after the free sale prices are kind of gone because right now this this cards that are like a hundred dollars like secrets that's not gonna be the case next week so uh yeah. joey if you want to um, kind of jump into it yeah no so i was gonna say the exact same thing um not necessarily gonna be a market watch focused video but uh the first card that i want to go into and i'll start sharing my screen now um is the sp little knight which i think is the most sought after or hyped up card whatever you want to say in this uh new age of overlord set um its effects on paper i, I haven't seen much play testing with it yet um the card i'm actually not I, i'm curious now to know if since the sneak peek event released the cards if they are legal to play at like a, a local ots or something yet because uh, i was trying to play with these these cards before this video on uh, du uh, what is it called? Dueling... Duel Links? Uh, uh, du no. Yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking uh, about. YGO, YGO Omega. And just to just have a better understanding of the cards, and I it wasn't allowing me to play with certain ones. So this card, uh, I did mention to Dean, he pulled it last week uh, off camera, unfortunately. I could see this being one of the quarter century rares that actually holds its value, if not goes up in value. For some reason, it, it always seems to be the Link monsters that were always like the most expensive Starlights. Uh, I think Dean can attest to that uh, for the most part. But um, this one had a pre-sale of $400. Now, I did say I, I could see it going up. I don't know if it'll go much higher than that, but I could actually see this card holding near maybe the three $400 uh, level. And if the card is that played... In the TCG, I, I think the, even the secret rare could hover around, you know, seventy to eighty dollars, similar to like a Chaos Angel Triple Tactics Thrust that just everybody wants to get their hands on. So this card reads: If this card is Link Summon using a Fusion, Synchro, Xyz, or a Link Monster as material, you can target one card on the field or in either graveyard, banish it. Also, your monsters cannot attack directly this turn, so that's a little bit of a drawback. When your opponent activates a card or effect, quick effect, target two face-up monsters on the field, including one of your own monsters, banish both until the end phase. Uh, you can only use each effect once per turn. So the main thing that I, I think people are are doing with this is it, the card in uh, style and name are, are, is somewhat akin to uh, IP Masquerina. I believe it's supposed to be from the same archetype even though that's a very loose archetype that doesn't really have a, a ton of structure, but this card would have a lot of synergy with IP Mascarena. So what you could do is you could make IP Mascarena with, you know, a couple other monsters on your board, uh, pass your turn to a, your opponent, and then you would, using IP Mascarena, which is a link monster, so as it says here, if this card is link summon using Fusion Synchro Link, um, you would link summon with IP Masquerina plus one of your other monsters into this card, which would give you the full effect of this card. You'd be able to, on your opponent's turn then, at, at any point in the main phase, uh, you'd be able to target one, as they're trying to set up their board, whatever, target one card in the field when this is summoned, in, or in either graveyard, banish it. Then you'd still have, <clears throat> excuse me, have a little bit of a cold. Um, then you would still have, on your opponent's turn, the second quick effect Whenever uh, your opponent activates a card or effect, any card or effect, spell trap, monster, target two face-up monsters on the field, uh, and one you control, banish it. So I'm assuming you'd probably maybe banish your own Little Knight plus one of their cards, but that's basically you're banishing two cards on their field during their turn, um, which will really hinder whatever strategy they're they're trying to play. On top, of, on top of the fact that you're, like I said, most likely going to be linking into this card with IP Mascarena, which will then make the SP Little Knight uh, indestructible by card effects. 
because uh, that's IP IP Mascarena's effect is any card that you use this as a link material for can't be destroyed by card effects. So um, there's just a ton of ton of potential, a ton of reasons why this card is somewhat justified at being so expensive. And it's generic. It doesn't require any sort of archetypal monsters. It's just any two effect monsters. So that card is crazy. In terms of like value, which we haven't seen a, a ton of in the last few sets, such as like Duelist Nexus, which is a, a terrible example, um, y this card I think could actually, you know, uh, hold some hold some value. Um, all right. Yeah, and I think I think that no, one ahead. day when we go over it, we're gonna know because right now when you look at the price, it's actually going up. So yeah, uh, yeah. the market price. I think it's 373. There's the listing median is 429. Um, you've had some sales over $400. If you look at the chart, it's going up. I think it was like 300 when we look, when we initially, when the pre-release happened. Uh, usually you see like a dip, but it's going up right now, so yeah. we'll see. Yeah. Well, and the the interesting thing is too. I think uh, there are some other websites that do pre-sales. I think one of them is called Gamers Choice or something similar to that. Um, and they were selling the, the quarter century secret rares at a pre-sale of like 200 something. Um, wow. so a lot of people are thinking they, you know, made out like bandits on that. If, if this TCG player, um, you know, price does hold up, but, um, from what I've heard, there's a lot less competition on TCG player for pre-sales and a bunch of other factors. So yeah, we'll have to see, and we'll, we'll do a full market watch breakdown of just this set uh in the coming week um friday it'll release so then we'll we'll get some more accurate prices yeah i think um, by monday we'll have a good idea of what what the prices yeah. are going to look like yeah we'll probably film that video over the weekend and put it out on monday um or something so something along those about, lines talk about jen and ken Gen and ken yes. yeah what is that um so jen and ken uh ken yeah jen and ken all right we'll start with ken uh, so these are just commons in uh, Age of Overlord, and I mentioned that in our pack opening video that, like, if these cards do become viable, uh, it's it's almost hard to believe that they will, just for the fact that Konami did make them commons. But at the same time, I'd like to believe that maybe they wanted to make them accessible to everybody. You have to normal summon these cards, so that's one drawback that I could see if you're if your deck is reliant on your normal summon, which can be detrimental to, to some decks, um, I'm of course always thinking specifically of my favorite deck, Scareclaw, which is still, even the way you currently play it, is still somewhat reliant on your normal summon. We'll just start by reading the effect. Once per turn, at the end of the battle phase, return this card from the field to the hand. Uh, you can only use each of the following effects of Ken the Warrior Dragon once per turn. Uh, during the main phase, special summon, so you'd have to normal summon this card, and then you get this effect. Uh, you can special summon one Gen the, the again the Diamond Tiger from your hand or deck to your opponent's field and defense position. If this card is special summoned by the effect of Gen the Diamond Tiger, your opponent draws two cards, then discards one. So let me read. I'm going to read Gen the Diamond Tiger now. This is not going to make sense until I until I read both of these and start explaining them. But yeah, okay, I, so, I, I don't, I don't get it. Okay, so it all makes They're sense linked, in a second. Right? But They're linked. They, yeah, so these two are, okay. are have synergy with each other. Obviously, they special summon. You would normal summon one of these, and it special summons the other one from your hand or deck to your opponent's field. So again, once per turn at the end of the battle phase, same thing. This returns to the hand. Uh, you can only use each of the following effects once per turn during the main phase. Special summon Ken from hand or deck to your opponent's field. If this card is special summoned by Ken, discard one card. So what you would basically do is Ken, you would normal summon this special summon uh, again to your opponent's side of the field. Then Gen would activate on your opponent's side of the field being a monster that your opponent now controls, right? So this would mean that Gen is now controlled by by your opponent, and if this card is special summoned by Ken, discard one card. That means you would make your opponent discard one card. So, because Gen, you sent Gen to your opponent's side of the field, basically, if you follow me, right? 
So um, that could be that could be decent. Um, it's it could actually help some decks. Uh, some people are still playing tier limits or Dark World or things like that, zombies, whatever. Uh, this could end up aiding your opponent. But the main thing that will just get out of the way is what these cards do, and you can even see in this uh, artwork on Gen. Uh, this thing in his hand is very similar to whatever the weapon that the characters in Triple Tactics Talent and Triple Tactics Thrust are holding in their hand, right? So I think that's done on purpose. I don't know if that's been confirmed yet, but what these cards are basically going to do is just make all of your Triple Tactics cards, whether Thrust or Talents, live at that point because now during your turn in the main phase your opponent has now activated a monster effect even though you're the one who sent the the monster to their field and it, and it but it activated while they controlled it so now you can triple tactics talent you can triple tactics thrust uh and i mean triple tactics thrust is insane you could search for any normal spell or trap from your deck which i don't need to explain why that is good um triple tactics talent you could draw two more cards you could take back your your gen or your ken um or you could look at your opponent's hand whatever um so these cards have a crazy amount of synergy with the triple tactics cards in in artwork and just their their effect is basically to force your opponent to make your triple tactics live on your turn so uh ken i i think honestly ken is probably the better card um that you'd want to summon to your opponent's side of the field um, because so you would, you know, same process, you'd summon, normal summon your Gen, uh, send Ken to your opponent's side of the field. And then Ken says, let me just make sure it's showing Ken. Yeah. So Ken says your opponent draws two cards and then they discard one card. Now your opponent, your opponent, you just put Ken on your opponent's side of the field. So when Ken act activates that that effect, your it's basically at that point you are the opponent. So if I send Ken to your side of the field, I now get to draw two cards and discard one card. So it's it's just insane. That's like a, a pot of greed plus or like a mini graceful charity, basically, um, where again discarding cards can be good for for you as the player, and you're also getting to draw two and then choose any. That you want to to discard which you know if you're if you are playing dark world or something like that there's a, a you know i could go even further into why that would be why that would be good um but you'd basically get and, and the fact that it says discard gives you all the extra effects of cards like dark world cards when you discard them um but yeah so those two cards, the the fact that they're commons, um, you know, th there's no, I, I don't see any chance of them actually going up in value. I have about six of each of them from our one box opening, um, but I did keep them aside just in case, like, I actually ever end up wanting to use them or whatever. Um, and I think a very interesting uh, sort of design, uh, card design for uh, for these commons. Um, now the only, the other thing, uh, that I think, I think it was a great job card design wise by Konami was the first effect once per turn at the end of the battle phase, return this card from your field to the, to your hand. So if you were to use this on your first turn, there is no battle phase. So it wouldn't go back to your, to your hand. Um, but what it would do in your opponent's main phase one or on your, your turn, this would shut off cards like infinite impermanence because your opponent needs to have no cards on their side of the field to activate imperm on your turn uh or on their turn for that matter in their their main phase one uh so they can't use impermanence on you if you they, they basically would be forced to imperm your ken or your gen sending the card yeah. to their field so, and they would waste it either way if you have if you have this card going first you can pretty much brick a opponent's deck right yeah, um, it would actually it would shut down cards like Kashira Fenrir because you 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 need to have no yeah, cards have no to cards. special summon it. Yep. Um, and so what your opponent would have to do is basically skip their main phase one and their battle phase um, in order to give you that card back and then start doing things. Uh, this would also shut down Lightning Storm 
on their main phase one can't have any face up cards to use lightning storm so it's just there's a lot with these cards um and they're a really cool design now like i said the one balanced uh portion of these cards i think is that they they did say once per turn at the end of the battle phase it gets returned from the field to the hand which would be which would be your hand if you're the one who summoned it to your opponent's field um now that would trigger it would get sent back to your hand and then your opponent could chain evenly matched so that's like i think a very smart design by konami that you could you could still use evenly matched and you're, you're not necessarily wasting your whole battle phase um you would be able to activate a card like evenly matched at the end of the battle phase after that goes back to your opponent's hand and actually you know at least get some sort of value or, or make some sort of a play there um but yeah that's really all, all i wanted to touch on those cards um i just think they're you know like i said many times interesting that they're just commons and there's a lot of different interactions that could happen with those cards so i'm excited to see how people if if people start to use those cards so all right so um, talk now about um Talk about Super Star Slayer Typhoon Sky Crisis, which I'm just calling the other Zeus card. <laughs> yeah, we'll just call yeah, yeah we'll just call him uh, Star Slayer, I guess. Um, yeah, so this card, uh, another crazy generic card. This is a, an Xyz monster, um, and again, it, it's in the similar vein in card art and the name style. Definitely supposed to fit in with the the Zeus sort of theme i wouldn't really call it an, an archetype but it's definitely seems to fall in that same universe the summoning condition of it is very similar to a, a zeus as well all right so during the turn or the turn after your opponent special summon two or more monsters from their extra deck you can also exceed summon this card using one monster you control with the highest attack your choice of tide transfer its materials to this card um it doesn't have to be an exceed monster like like Zeus had to be, uh, you have to battle with an Xyz monster or an Xyz monster has to battle, period. And then you would have to control an Xyz monster to overlay your Zeus on. Uh, this card from what I'm reading could just be any normal monster, effect monster, uh, and you just overlay this on it. Um, now, if you do, you cannot special, normal or special summon monsters for the rest of this turn. While this exceeds summon monsters on the field, neither player can activate the effects of monsters with 3,000 or more attack. Once per turn, you can detach one material from this card, return one monster from the field to the hand. So, this card, uh, I think, is another card that is, for an ultra rare, it's somewhat valuable. I think it's going to continue to hold its value, and if not, go up in value in this set, uh, depending on how techable how many people are just running this in their deck as a, a utility card essentially which is what most people do with cards like zeus and ip mascarena etc now this card is very good at outing high attack and problematic monsters um it would negate the effects of any monster with 3000 or more attack and then basically allowing you to spin back one of those cards to the hand or the extra deck whatever the case may be by detaching a material from this card so the one i guess good thing about this is it says you cannot normal or special summon monsters for the rest of this turn so you could make your normal plays bait out a bunch of negates from your opponent um and then then your final play you can make this card negate most of their big monsters spin something back and you at that point you probably have somewhat of a board established um or even if they've they've wasted all of their disruptions on your your normal plays you can just go into this card which seems kind of kind of crazy it's you know 2900 attack and you get to spin a card back uh to the hand or you know the extra deck all right and last card i want to touch on in this set is the new labyrinth card arias the labyrinth butler now I've I've enjoyed playing Labyrinth. I, I started playing it on Master Duel. I built most of the deck in uh, in the TCG paper uh, paper deck, and I don't know. I've I've kind of lost interest in playing this deck. Um, I don't know necessarily why. I think a lot of people started playing it once they released the new support on Master Duel, 
And it's just one of those things. Once you play against the deck a bunch, you start to get annoyed by it or whatever the case is. But I do enjoy this deck. I respect how powerful it can be once its uh, engine gets going. Um, now, this card, I've, I've heard some Labyrinth players saying that they're not going to touch this card. Others saying they potentially would run uh, a copy of this or, or maybe two. Um, I couldn't necessarily, I couldn't see this being a three of, um, but the main thing is it's a level six, so it, it could be seen as a, a brick in your hand, I suppose. Um, however, let's just start by, we'll read the effect. During the main phase, quick effect, to send this card from your hand or field to the graveyard, special summon one labyrinth monster, which that's a great effect, or set one normal trap from your hand. The set normal trap can be activated this turn. So that effect alone is crazy and maybe makes it worth this being a, a one of, I, I would think. Could be totally wrong about that. Um, but now when your opponent activates a card or effect in response to your card or effect activation of a normal trap or a labyrinth card, so that could be a monster, uh, except for Arias, quick effect, you can activate this effect in the graveyard, special summon this card. You can only use each effect once per turn. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it, to call it a brick in your hand, I guess, is maybe not fair because you can discard this card and then probably, you know, proc your opponent to, to trigger something and then you special summon this card back. So, I mean, 1500 attack, 2500 defense, that's a solid, you know, defense. You could put up, you know, a nice wall with mostly rather labyrinth monsters, high attack, high defense. It doesn't get any effect once you special summon it back from the graveyard so i'm kind of missing the idea with that um i guess it could give you extra fodder to spin back to your hand again with your big welcome or something along those lines but mainly the the thing that really caught my eye is set a normal trap from your hand and it can be activated this turn that that effect if you know labyrinth i mean that is just crazy another another card similar to i believe the ku clock uh, i haven't played much of like the furniture labyrinth as they call it I really played the deck when it got its early support release in uh, Master Duel with just regular Welcome Labyrinth and all that stuff. Yeah, that, that effect alone, I think, like I said, could make this card being worth uh, a one of in the Labyrinth deck. So um, that's that's basically going to wrap up, I think, like the just the meta and like gameplay portion of this. Those are like the main cards I wanted to touch on. There are others like the uh, Visa Samsara, which is the card I was referring to. I was trying to test out on YGO Omega. Wouldn't let me run the card in my deck. It still said OCG above it. So if anyone knows why that was the case, I tried setting it to unlimited, uh, which would allow me to play any card. Uh, but I don't know. That's one of the other cards that I'm interested in, maybe uh, being a one of in like my Minadium deck or Scareclaw deck, these cards, the Magicians of Bonds and Unity, which is like they're, it was, I think like a, they're trying to make this the collector card of the quarter century rare sets that have been coming out. Mm -hmm. um, now, Duelist Nexus um, was the first release of this card. This card on pre-release was like $500. Obviously we know that pre-release prices don't really mean much, but it did kind of like flatline around like 200 or so. And now at this point, it's it's basically down like 50%, it's almost like a $100 card. Um, and what's interesting is pre-release price now of the new version of this card, which I don't know if, if TCG player is just posting the same picture, but this looks like the exact same card to me. Oh, that's uh, the one. I, not, yeah, that's... No, so, no, it does look exactly the same. I think they're supposed to have different colored backgrounds or something like that. And again, it seemed just like a, like a pseudo almost like forced collector's item that they're like trying to put into these, which is not a bad idea because of the way that quarter century rares have been going. Um, but this is clearly not working out because we saw, I just showed how much the Duelist Nexus version dropped and now in pre-sale prices for the uh, age of overlord version, already listings at $150, which is around the price of what the uh, Dune version is. So uh, people are not yeah, loving this, I guess. Like, it's you the know, same photo. it's the same photo. 
Yeah, it, it must be. So I, I, I don't think they look all that much different in the, the actual version. Like I said, I think it's just a different colored background. And yeah, I think the idea was to to artificially make these collector's items that like, oh, you can get a different version in each set, whatever. And like, I'm sure there are some people who will chase them. And, you know, I could be totally wrong. These could go up in the future because they, in a way, they do have that collector feel to them. They're magicians, but they have no synergy with an actual dark magician deck or, or yeah, any so anything related. So I think if they did, if they did that, these cards could have been very valuable. Um, I would have bought and, it. Uh, yeah, and the point is, like, they didn't make these in secret rares, ultra rares. They only came in quarter century rares, which are these are the only cards in those set uh, sets that didn't have a alternate rarity, um, basically. And yeah, I guess you know people are just not people are not buying it right now. They how they're not them, in, how interested. Many more of them, how many more of them are supposed to release? I think four in total, three or four, and in, in, oh, so yeah, maybe one or two more. There's a good um, chance that once they're all out, then you're going to see a price spike. That's possible because people, people yeah. will want the set. But this yeah. is Joe. It's a little marker watch right now. It is. I mean, well, this is like you know, this does relate to Age of Overlord. I was just I saw this. Uh, I was looking for it on the top of the quarter century rare list in the in the set on tcg player and i'm like i can't find this card like where is it and it's it's one of the lower quarters it's almost like the same price as like the manadium uh quarter century rare um yeah just kind of i I saw that when i was looking for like the meta cards and it just kind of blew my mind so i wanted to talk about that all right so since we're talking about meta in you know the TCG paper Yu-Gi-Oh, um, I did want to touch on the little bit of Master Duel meta. No pun intended. Um, I didn't get a chance to like I usually do make like a pack opening or just a uh, Master Duel update video this time. So um, I just have Master Duel pulled up here, and as most of you probably already know who play uh, Master Duel, Kashtira is now here. Um, you can, some people hate it. Some people love it. I'll be up front right here. Uh, I chose to be the villain this time. I, uh, <laughs> fully built the cash deck. I had most of the cards from the previous pack. This, this pack just gave us, uh, a little bit of the remaining support. Uh, the, one of the biggest ones being obviously this card cash Rise rise heart, which really awesome looking card also fits into the Visa star frost lore. Um, not as synergistic as some other decks with that particular card exactly. Um, but I had a ton of gems left over, so I didn't buy any, any car, any of the packs. I don't, I don't think I bought a single pack of the Pirelli, um, and the Makanko pack. Both of those decks are, are very powerful. I definitely respect both of them. I don't necessarily enjoy playing against them. Um, but I do think that, well, for me, aesthetically, Kashira is just the coolest one of them. Um, and it's arguably the best deck in Master Duel right now. If not just, you know, neck and neck with uh, Pearly, Pirelli, whatever. Um, and you can see here, uh, I also have pulled up, as I somewhat alluded to before, the Master Duel meta website. So uh, shout out to Decade, a uh, big fan of his content. And honestly, I've learned most of what I know about just how to play meta Yu-Gi-Oh from watching his content. So big fan of that. Um, but the website he, he runs is also incredible. Like I use this almost on a daily basis. Uh, and you can see very quickly cash here, uh, has shot up to tier one, like I said, neck and neck with, uh, Pirelli. And I genuinely think I mean, cash has only been out for it's less than a week or maybe a week at this point. Um, um, a little more than that. I think it was October 9th, the pack release. So it was like, yeah, oh, like okay. less, yes, 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 less yeah, than yeah. a week. So it's been, it's been playable in a couple tournaments. I think DK himself ran a couple tournaments and obviously cash here was the majority of the top cut, uh, decks. But I think by next week, after a couple more tournaments, whatever cash is just gonna, I don't think it'll necessarily be like tier zero. Uh, a lot of people I think would agree with that because 
Pirelli is a very powerful deck um, that could potentially counter Kashtira if they were to go first. And it kind of becomes that sort of a thing where, like, you know, depending on if Kashtira is able to set up the Arise Heart and all their cards get banished, they're kind of screwed. If Pirelli is able to set up the Noir and spin back all the special summons, then their Kashtira is kind of screwed. But uh, overall, um, yeah, Kashtira is quickly shooting up to being the deck to beat essentially um and i've actually that's something i've i've actually been enjoying i think as i've just learned how to play a little bit better um just in general um i understand now why people like like a tier zero format where tier limits was like mainly the the deck you're always going to go up against or cash tira you're expecting to always face that particular deck because you can still play your rogue or like non-meta deck, but it allows you to side deck or in Master Duel, basically build your deck in a way to perfectly counter whatever that deck you know nine out of 10 times you're gonna go up against that deck. And I've, you know, so like I said, I did build the, the pure cash tier deck, but I also, uh, we got some support in this, in this set all the way back from Darkwing Blast, I've been waiting for this card for so long. Uh, the Scareclaw Twin Saw, which I'm going to try to share this again. Okay, so actually they didn't put it in this pack, but it was added to the the now the new Scareclaw Secret Pack, um, which is interesting. But we also got Scareclaw Kashtira, which is very good in Kashtira, and especially uh, Scareclaw, just adding another extender. To the deck and cards like defanging which is just uh, i mean on paper this card just reads very very broken um so main thing i've been playing is a scareclaw updated scareclaw deck with some of the cashier cards basically just fenrir and your scareclaw cashiers uh but that's something i want to do a full video on uh just my updated uh scareclaw deck profile playing in the the last thing I wanted to touch on, which this leads into perfectly, is the Duelist Cup just started. So uh, a bunch of free gems for you guys to get from playing in that. I've been playing that Scareclaw, Kashtira sort of deck, and uh, I'll definitely have a full video of deck profile and gameplay with that. And I've been climbing, I've been climbing very fast with it, even going against, I have a few uh, games saved going against Kashtira with their full board. and. I'm not going to say it's easy, but like I said, when you know that majority of the people, especially in a competitive environment, are going to be playing what is probably the best deck, Kashtira, I have just able to build my deck in a way that can perfectly out that that deck. And I don't know, I've just I've been enjoying it. I'm really happy that I finally got some of these uh, support cards to make Scareclaw in my opinion, I think it's always been heavily underrated, but right now, I, I think with the addition of these new cards, it's just uh, an incredible deck and hands down my favorite to to play. Uh, Dean, have you been playing any Master Duel recently? I'm playing just my Dark Magician deck. Um, I'm on Silver, so or Platinum, 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 yeah, probably. Uh, so I'm like fifty fifty. Depending on the have day. You, uh, have you played again? Uh, you played since Cashier came out? No, I haven't played in the past. Week. Well, I have actually, and I haven't played. I haven't played against the cash, any Cashier other than the ones that were already there. Oh, okay, yeah. So you, yeah, you might not have played since Arise Heart came out. Um, I think I have. Like, I just, might, I might just not have played yeah. it. I'm still pretty, pretty low. Oh, okay, I got you. So I feel like someone yeah, who. I, yeah, no, interestingly, on the on the ranked up. ladder, I haven't seen a ton of it, um, but. Now, like I said, this uh, Duelist Cup started, and I've been seeing a, a decent amount of it. It's not, it's not like every deck you go up against, but uh, it's definitely once you get to the, I, I, I would assume the higher tiers on the, the ranked ladder and the higher tiers of the Duelist Cup, it's going to be a majority of, of the decks. But um, yeah, I'll be screwed. I'll be, I'll be dead in the water. Well, yeah, that's why we'll um, maybe do another video updating your. Dark Magician deck with some I, of those cards that I was alluding be, to. That would actually be a very fun video making. That actually probably get a bunch of views. Yeah, yeah. So making that's something. 
we'll Write definitely have to put in the works. Yeah. Um, all right, but, is that it? Yeah, guys, that's uh, that's basically all we wanted to touch on here today. Um, you know, as we just said, Master Duel videos to come. Uh, probably, uh, definitely my updated Scareclaw deck profile and uh, Dean's updated Dark Magician deck to counter Tier Zero Cash Tier. That'll be the clickbait title of that one. I mean, and that's, that's gold right there. That's good. That's good. Did you write it down? I didn't yet, but we are at the dance. We're going to forget. All right. All right. Till next time. Bye. Bye.